Things that make you go, hmm. March 1996, Bellevue, Washington. Next time you're in a debate with a feminist, have some fun. At any time you want, look her right in the eyes and with a happy smile say, I just know that in the end you'll get everything you deserve. Then sit back and wait for her guilty conscience to kick in. Warning, don't do this in private. Do this in public with lots of witnesses. Otherwise, she will almost certainly accuse you of threatening her. Feminists attack most vehemently in men those vices which they hate most in themselves and claim most vigorously those virtues which they envy most in men. On one radio talk show, a caller complained that I was throwing around my opinions like they were facts. In fact, I had expressed two opinions which I clearly identified as such and also cited statistics from several surveys. But that's the way it is with feminists. When feminists express feelings, it's fundamental truth. When we cite statistics, it's opinion. The same caller complained that the backlash doesn't help men do their inner work. Tell you what, when the Seattle Times, the Washington Post, Ms. Magazine, the United States government, and my grocery store start helping the new rage women handle their inner work, I'll think about it. In the meantime, give men who run with a sheep a read. It might help. If not, check out Molesting Your Inner Child. It comes highly recommended. Some pro-feminist men say that men should seek approval from women's groups, that we should look to women to teach us how to be men. But most men already do that. They watch what kind of men women sleep with and then follow their lead. Montel Williams, the talk show host, says women should be angry that a woman with a college degree can make more money as a topless dancer than on a salary. Right, Montel. And should men with a college degree also be angry that women can make more money dancing topless than most men can make on a salary? More dancing topless? <laughs> Among the things men miss about the 1950s is not the supposed f supremacy of men, but that women were not so much looking for men who had made it, but men who were doing what it took to make it. For most of human history, women have lived with people they know, while men spent much of their time dealing with people they did not know. Consequently, the sexes developed different traditions with different values. Carol Gilligan distinguished between the two by attributing an ethic of caring to women and an ethic of rights to men. Caring, as Paul Shaner Sr. noted, depends upon knowing who you're dealing with, while rights requires knowing only the rules. Work at a large company, you don't need to know your thousands of co-workers to get along, only the rules. But feminists want to throw out the rules and replace them with caring for the individual. And since feminism is about women, that means caring for women, not men. According to various surveys, the mean average number of sexual partners per man is about 15. Remember, that was in 1996. That's because professional athletes, rock stars, and other high-status male prostitutes have hundreds, even thousands, of partners. Meanwhile, the mean average for women was much lower. But what if the surveys that establish these figures were to include female prostitutes, many of whom also have hundreds, if not thousands, of partners? Wouldn't that provide a more realistic comparison? Of course, these days, the mean average for men has dropped to around seven, while the mean average for women has soared. Fanatics can't see both sides of an issue. This inability to see both sides is a hallmark of feminism, which has become a religion. Feminists say the personal is political. Okay, but when some of what is political for feminists has an adverse effect on most men's personal, then should the femagogues be surprised and protest when men politicize their personal too? Yeah, well, hypergamy. What happens if you tell a guy, stop thinking about pink elephants? Well, he'll think about pink elephants. And what happens when you tell a guy, stop thinking about sex? Duh. That's all for now. Check out the other videos. Subscribe to the channel. For the Backlash at Backlash.com, my name is Rod Van Mecklen.